Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, gonna do something a little bit different. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna finish a clock using some pin parts. A few years ago, I started making some modified slim lines and on these the junior gents I started doing some custom finials making the finials to where the finial matched the body of the pen got a video here part of my pen makers canvas series that you can see how that's done uh, making a custom finial you can see how it really adds to the pen and when you do that when you when you do away with a center band or you do away with a finial you end up with a bunch of center bands and a bunch of finials. That is if you're like me and don't throw them away. And that's what I've got. I've got a bunch of these finials and I was thinking how can I use them? How can I use them? By the way in a second I'll show you if you didn't see it I'll show you how I knock these finials out of these caps. You know, when the kit comes in, it's got the gold finial in the top or silver or whatever it is. And I'll show you how that's done real quick here in a sec. But I decided I'm I'm been making a clock or two and I'm thinking, okay, I get tired of the 12, 3, 6, and 9 numbers. Let's do something different. And I'm thinking, let's try to use these finials. You can see if we use them, I'm going to zoom in on them here. Really some possibilities here. You can really see if you were to use some of these finials, they will really add a touch to your clock face. And even these center bands, you've got the big center bands from the seven millimeter I think it's called streamlines or something like that. And then, then, then you have the small center bands from just the regular 7 millimeter slimline. And I'm going to use them in our clock face. We'll show you how in just a sec. <clears throat> Most of these finials, they're just sitting in there and they're epoxied in or whatever. So we have to punch them out. This punch size, and by the way, this is a set of Harbor Freight punches. Uh, I think they're $12 at Harbor Freight. I'll leave you uh, a link in the description. But it, this one is 13 30 seconds, and it fits on there perfect. Now what I have, I've got an, an oak block with an 11 30 second hole. Now what that does, that lets this part of the cap sit on this rubber. I've got it covered with a rubber gasket. When you make this, put your rubber gasket down and then drill uh, your, your uh, 11 30 seconds hole. That way your rubber gasket stays out on the edge. But you just simply place your cap over that rubber gasket, insert the uh, punch with the punch side down, in there and just give it a good couple of taps. There it is. It's that easy to remove the finial. Okay, so here's my clock face. Of course you have the 12, the 3, the 6, and the 9 o'clock positions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these center bands from seven millimeter slim lines from when I made all those modified slim lines and I'm going to use them in as those 12, 3, 6, and 9 positions. The diameter on this is 2364 so I'm just going to insert those in these holes and they're about four millimeters deep. So you put those in, in there and it creates a silver ring, if you will. And then you're saying, okay, what are you going to do about the middle? Well, here's what we're going to do about the middle. I've put blue epoxy. And I'm going to bring it up so you can see it. Put blue epoxy in the center of it. And it's going to make a real unique 
clock face position for those four positions. Plus, it's using some hardware that you've got laying around, and you can't buy this kind of hardware over the counter or from any supplier. So you're making a unique piece of woodworking, a unique piece of artwork. Now, let me show you how I went about putting epoxy in this center band. Okay, I have my two-part, five-minute epoxy spread out on my tape. And I put a piece of masking tape, sticky side up, and then taped it down. And then I just stuck these down. That keeps the epoxy from flowing out across the bottom. So I've got my epoxy here that I'm going to use, and I'm just going to add some of my blue sparkle mica powder. Doesn't take much, and then we just mix it. It's a little cool in Texas today. I wish it were just a little warmer so this epoxy would flow just a little bit better. But it is what it is. Can't complain. Ten days ago it was zero degrees here, so certainly I don't want that. This is where I kind of have to be careful, otherwise I make a mess. Just take a little bit, and we get it into the middle. to compress it just a little bit to make sure we don't have any voids. It will have a tendency to flow out. Casting resin might be a little better, maybe not quite as thick as this two-part epoxy. Of course it is 56 degrees. And you'll also want to keep on hand denatured alcohol and I just put a little bit on a paper towel and then we try to clean up the edges so we don't have any epoxy on the ring itself There you have it. When those dry, they will be just real pretty. And again, it'll be your unique hardware. Okay, now I'm just going to glue these center bands into the clock face. And you just want to mix up your epoxy real good. There's no rocket science here folks. It's just a little dab of epoxy in the hole. I'm just going to, while I'm doing, I'm going to put it in all of them. Let me just place them in. We'll let that dry and then we'll put the hands on it. Well, here's our finished clock. As you can see, those blue center bands, they show up real nice. A good contrast to the colors of the woods that we have. Just FYI, I don't think I explained to this, but the wood combination is this. This is ingrain maple that's inlaid into just some barn wood. And then this is um, white oak. And the, the three of them together is, uh, I think, a real classy look. 
It's got a Psycho Quartz movement in it from Clockit.com. No sponsor, that's just what I use. I only use Quartz movement, usually Psycho, and the Atomic uh, clock movements. That's all I ever use. They very seldom fail me. But that's, uh, you can see how our center bands and look real nice and the finials will do just as well thanks everybody for tuning in my next video is going to be we're going to make a kitless pin out of walnut now several months ago actually it's probably close to a year 18 months ago i did a video on preparing these walnut blanks with black uh, acrylic inserts so that we can drill and tap it to make a kitless pen and if you want to get caught up before this next video comes out on how we prepared those blanks uh, I'll leave a link in the description below for that video and maybe an end card at the end of this video that you can go to and watch that video where we prepared those blanks for this pen that I'm going to make in the next two weeks I'll try to get it out in the next, uh, within the next two weeks. We'll see how my schedule goes. But I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, and leave me a comment. All my contact information is uh, on Instagram. It's on YouTube. And, and, and it is on my website. My website's kind of outdated, not very current. But my contact information is there. Thanks again. And everybody, please be safe. And we'll see you next time.